Amen. God bless you. Glad you're back. Uh, we get look this based on the uh, sequence of this video. Uh, we've been talking about the uh, the day before Thanksgiving. So I wish you a happy Thanksgiving and uh, give God the praise and glory that you made it through another year. Uh, and those who have gone home to the Lord, uh, the fact is that they were a blessing to you at doing their life. So therefore, we, 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 we recognize that. And, and, and those who have gone home to the Lord, we'll see them again. Amen. That's that's. That, that's how we look at that, because we walk by faith, and in our faith, we believe that God is going to uh, bring our loved ones uh, back to, or we're going to see our loved ones when we go home to the Lord, amen? But we know history, history has, has clearly shown that uh, all of us one day will leave, you know? But there's some that God has spared you from an accident. Uh, there's some who God has... Uh, deliver you from this, look, especially this COVID-19 and, and some of these other diseases, God has delivered you through. So that, that's a blessing in itself too. So we've been talking about, and, and then we'll go back to it. Uh, the subject is what does God say who you are? That's critical, is what does God say who you are? Because that's where you want to be. That's where you want to focus on is what does God say who you are? And I, the, what, the whole purpose of all my studies have been is making sense and understanding God's word. Nehemiah 8, 8 says, so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's how our study is about, is making sure you understand the word of God, refer back to the word of God, study the word of God, so that you can continue to, to, to operate in his behalf. And understand this fact is, what does God say about you is far more important than what people say about you. And in some cases, if you got a negative opinion about yourself, we really got to get to the point where even that has to cease. Amen? We got to sit there and say, what does God say that I am? Some of you go into presence anyway because you think how, you, you know, how people or how you think about yourself opposed to what the narrative God has given you. You are a winner in Christ. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Believe that, you know? So really the quick synopsis of what we did last week, the last session, uh, we talked about the, uh, we talked about the fact is that Peter did, did confessed Jesus Christ. And I was bringing up this whole thing about this now session. This is about the fact is if they put Jesus down, they're going to put you down. That's, a, that's what you need to understand. You're in good company as far as concerned how people want to put you down. People sit there and even Jesus cast out devil. They still try to say Jesus was a devil, you know? So you got to look at those type of things, right? And then we get into the man healed, born blind is the one we stopped off at. That we were, we, we, prior in the last session, we was talking about the fact is that the man, they said we, verse 16, look at that in John 9, 16. Therefore says some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Others say, how can a man that is a sinner, they say Jesus is a sinner, do such miracles? And there's a vision among them. Why? Because the narrative that they pushed on him is different than the narrative they want to give. Or that it's different. Their narrative is contradicting what Jesus is supposed to be able to do. And they said unto the blind man again, what says thou unto him? That he opened thy eyes. He said he is a prophet. You know? Uh, this man said, look, I'm going by his deeds. And that's another thing to keep on in mind too. People don't go by what you say. They go more and more what you do. And then also when you, that's another point too. When you minister the word of God, minister the word of God. They can question you all day, day, all day long. What does the word say? Amen. That's very important. You know, so once again, they went and called the man. Let me see here. I think here. Uh, they called their parents and they asked the same questions and he had the answer. I don't know who saved him, but I, all I know is that he is our son. And he was born blind and uh, he is of age. You ask him. Amen. I mean, that's what he was saying. Look, don't bring me into it. Don't drag me into it. Your narrative is obviously is fault, faulty and you got to. So therefore you want to challenge it. Go to him. Right. And in there is verse uh, 922. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews for 
the Jews had agreed already that if a man, that if any man did confess that he was Christ, they should be put out of synagogue. And that's another thing how people do that, right? <laughs> is the fact is that they will, uh, they look at, I mean, look at that scripture that said, if, if you go anything other than the narrative that we gave you, if you go against any narrative, let me come off this thing right here. People will use the church, use ostracizing you and anything else if you don't agree with their narrative. You need to understand the only narrative that matters is God Almighty. Don't get wrapped up and tied up into other people's narrative. Don't let them sit there. If you want to put me out, put me out. Because I'm a trust in God. So you can't put me out of his hands. You can't pluck me out. You can't put me out. You can put me out of your building. You can put me out of your little facility, but you can't put me out of God Almighty. He opened the door for me to come in and I walk in and I'm going in. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care how you perceive about me. I am going by what God says about me. That's what's important. And that's why I want to ride home with you. Because if they're going to talk about Jesus, they're going to talk about you. So don't let people tomorrow. I mean, you saw the scriptures tomorrow. I'm going to put you out of the church if you don't, if you talk any way other than the narrative. Listen to that, because that's how people have been doing. The devil been using all the time. You know, the fact is, let me get you to agree with me. I'm going to threaten you that you got to go by my narrative, my doctrine, my will, opposed to God's will. I'm telling you, it's more important for you if you go by God's will instead of man's will. Amen? Don't get wrapped up in that. What does God say about you? Don't get wrapped in that. That's what, I mean, that, that could pluck me right there when you saw about it. You know, let's go back to it again, but it, that plucked me. How people sit there, oh, 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 you, you don't agree with my name. I'm going to put you out of the church. Well, I'm just telling you today, let them put you out. Let them put it out. Let them put you out. Let, let them go. Don't, don't, you don't need to be somewhere that doesn't line up with the will of God about you. You got to sit there and say, focus on what God says. So I got wrapped up on this 922, John 922. These words spake his parents because they feared. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. God has given us spirit of fear, but love, power, and self mind. Because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already. They only made the decision that if any man did confess that he was Christ, the anointed one, he should be put out of the synagogue. You know? And in verse 26, I like this. Then said they unto what is what was that? What, what the man said, verse 25. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. That was I I, I heard your narrative. But I'm not into your narrative. I don't, I don't. I can't confirm your narrative. All I know is one thing: that whereas I was blind, hey, <laughs> glory to God, I can see. See, some of you sit there. Uh, when, when I was a drunk, now I'm sober, huh? When I was a sinner, <laughs> now I'm a saint. Hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, let's come up this again for a second. What do you know? Let's give a second. What? 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 People sit there and say you're a loser. I, I'm a winner. Huh? Were you a liar? I may have been a liar, but now I tell the truth. I speak the truth, which is the word of God. Huh? Whatever I was is irrelevant of what I am. <laughs> irrelevant. It, it, it doesn't matter about what I was. It matters of who I am. That's important, man. Come on, bro. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. It matters of who I am, not who I was. <laughs> it matters where I'm going. <laughs> Eternal life. Not where I came from. It doesn't matter about the color of my skin. It matters about the eternal life. It doesn't matter what I'm black or white. It matters about my eternal life. It matters the fact that I've been clean and washed because of him. I'm justified because of him. I've been sanctified because of him. It doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter my shortfalls. It just matters who I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
Man, come on, brother. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. That's why it's the good news. That's why it's the good news. To somebody, I don't want you to get that. They don't want you to get that. They want you to get something that 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 calls you to continue to walk in defeat and failure. They want to cause you to walk in condemnation, going to hell. You know what I mean? So in verse uh, 9, John 9, verse 26, then said they to him again, what did he to thee? How open he thy eyes? That's the question. After all that stuff, I just got wrapped up another day, but let's keep pushing. Nine, John 9, 27, he answered them. I told you already. This is, I'm trying to say, they can't hear. <laughs> People don't want to hear something that don't lie to their narrative. If you don't lie to their narrative, they don't want to hear it. And you did, and you did not hear? Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you be able to be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. See, that's our narrative. We know that God spake unto Moses. We know. How you know? By faith, right? Because you weren't there. Hey, glory to God. For as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. And he's in your midst. Moses was in the history. Jesus is in the present. And they, at that time, and they, they, ain't know where, they don't know where he's from. The man answered and said unto them, where, why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is. And yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God here is not a sinner. We know that the narratives that you say is irrelevant. The bottom line is God here is not a sinner. The words you say is irrelevant because obviously God heard him. But if a man that be a worshiper of God and does his will, he, he him, he hears. He's, he's talking to him. And that's what you need to understand. God hears you because you're a child of God. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that is born blind? That's verse uh, John 9, 32. If this man were not of God, he could not do, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sin. Now, now we now we're gonna get now, we're gonna cur, now the character assassination goes after you. Because you don't line up to the narrative. That's how people do, and you have you gotta watch out for that junk, peer pressure. And does thou teach us? Huh? And they cast him out. Oh, they weren't born in sin. But he was born in sin. And therefore, he was born in sin. He can't teach them. Huh? And they cast him out. And when he had found, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe on the Son of God? I'm talking about Jesus. No, I'm sorry. I read it. I read it. Verse 935. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Just like Jesus will hear about people casting you out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe on him? <laughs> Amen. I like that. That's, I could dwell on that a little bit longer, but I want to be to wrap this one up with you guys. Then Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, you see, therefore your sin remaineth. Amen on that. You know, I, I, of course we got to close out. But did you catch that, man? I'm, I might even have uh, the Friday one because it's Thursday coming up. And you, I'm not going to say when I'm Thursday. I know you definitely going to see those on Thursday. <laughs> I'm nice at that anyway. Hallelujah. But the point is, 
That's deep. So believe and trust in God what he says about you. Don't don't go, don't give to peer pressure. I don't care what people say. He received you. And if he received you, there's your eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, I hope you do have a, a, a great Thanksgiving. God bless you. Give God the praise. Amen. All right. I'll check you later. Bye-bye.